Welcome to Dr. Jalil Photography Channel. Today, I'll be discussing five major mistakes in macro photography. Welcome to Dr. Jalil Photography Channel. Today, I'll be discussing five major mistakes in macro photography as a beginner. I have done these mistakes when I started macro photography a couple of years back during the COVID lockdown. After all these years in macro photography, I decided to make a video for the beginners to help them to understand what are the major mistakes in macro photography usually done by the beginners. Before I start, here is an appeal for my viewers. During my analysis of my video channel, I have seen 87% of my viewers did not subscribe my channel. To subscribe my channel, it won't cost you any money, but it will help me growing my channel for the macro photography lovers. And anyone is interested in photography, I'm not going to press anyone to subscribe my channel, but it will help me growing my channel so that future viewers can watch my videos. So please do subscribe my channel and press the bell icon for my upcoming videos. Before going into details of these major mistakes, I am doing this video on my tabletop studio to explain the major mistakes usually we do during macro photography as a beginner. Because I have all the setup ready here to explain one by one in details so that my viewers can understand what could be the mistakes and how it can be corrected how you can avoid these mistakes. Before going into details, let me explain the setup I am using today. I will be using Sony A6500 and APS-C camera with 50mm Sony macro lens, 1 is to 1 macro lens and a Godox 350 flash with the radiant diffuser on top of it. So this is my camera setup and I will be using two flower, one is a red color flower as a subject, a small flower and another one is pink color slightly larger flower as a subject for today's experiment. I am using flowers as a subject because these are fixed items not moving here and there like an insect. My intention is to understand the mistakes that could be done which is not possible with the moving subject or moving insect on my tabletop studio. So I, I, so I decided to use flowers instead of insect or other items. Now about the background, I am using a green leaf at the, as a background for to create a natural environment and there is a flashlight behind the green leaf for eliminating the background. All this will come into discussion today as a part of the mistakes. I will be using a flashlight to explain the mistakes in this video today. If, if you are interested to learn the techniques and the mistakes we could do during macro photography, please watch until the end. I will be explaining step by step five major mistakes. In my next upcoming video, in a couple of days or so, I'll be explaining another five minor mistakes on macro photography. If you are interested in macro photography, please subscribe my channel, press the bell icon, stay connected so that you can get the notification upcoming videos on five minor mistakes. Let me start one by one 
about the five major mistakes usually the beginners can do during macro photography. I'll be showing the major mistakes one after another step by step and also how we can overcome or how we can avoid these mistakes. I'll be explaining I'll be explaining the number one mistake at the end of this video because that is a very special mistake normally you can do. There's nothing to do with the setup, nothing to do with the camera. That is a very special mistake. Let me start with the number two first. Not focusing right. I've done it before. I've done during my macro photography in early stage. When I started macro photography two years, three years back during the COVID lockdown. Whenever I have a camera, and the subject, I started shooting it without focusing the eyes of the insect or without focusing the subject particular area where I want to see in details. On the number two point, I'll be focusing the center part of this flower. So I will show you how do I do it on my tabletop studio. Let me start my camera and the flash now I'll show the camera setting, flash setting. My camera setting, I fixed the aperture at f8, the shutter speed 1 over 160, ISO 100. And the flash I'll be using at 1 over 16, flash strength. So this is the camera setting. Let me do focusing of the subject. What I do, on tabletop studio I use this focus ring and I use the focus picking on the LCD screen so whenever I see the red color focus picking I just start clicking the subject let me show you now I'm focusing the center part of the the yellow part which I consider is the most important part of this flower for focusing the sharpest image on that part. So what I'm doing, I'm using a focus picking as well as focus magnification on the LCD screen. You can see the red color focus picking. Now I start click. I'll take another one. I'll take several red in fact. And I'll change the angle a little bit. Take few more pictures. Now you can see the red color focus picking on the focusing area with the focus magnification. Change the angle a little bit. Take few more pictures in this position. Now change the angle a little bit. This is in a slightly different angle, so I am again taking some snapshots, at least three or four, uh, with the focus magnification and focus picking. So I am using both. So this is how we need to do focusing the eyes of the insect or focusing the center part of the flower, where. You can see the more details of the pollen area. Number three mistake, I've done it before many many times when I started macro photography, shooting in direct sunlight. This is, you'll get an extremely bad photograph if you shoot in a direct sunlight. For today's discussion, for today's 
experiment. I am doing it inside my, I don't have any option here to take picture in direct sunlight. So what I will be using a flashlight. So this will simulate the direct sunlight during macro photography. So I will use this flashlight to simulate the direct sunlight. I have the remaining setting same but I will expose the, my subject, I will expose subject on direct sunlight like this. You can see the flower is exposed, heavily exposed and the outcomes of these pictures on direct sunlight even with the radiant diffuser. If I expose the subject in direct sunlight, let me take some snapshots. Changing the angle a little bit. So I have taken several pictures exposing this flower in direct sunlight using this flashlight. So I will take again several snaps without direct sunlight and with this setting already I have taken during focusing. So I will compare side by side. What is the remedy for this? What you have to do during macro photography if the day is very shiny? What I do normally, I try to take pictures in shaded area. If there is no shade, if you do not have any scope, I usually cover the subject with my body so that I can avoid the direct sunlight during macro photography. I try to use my own body to hide the sunlight and give a soft shade over the subject. Otherwise, I would recommend to do photography in, in early morning or after evening when there is, the light is soft. I will be doing another video outdoor explaining these mistakes, how to overcome these mistakes, how to avoid those mistakes in outdoor macro photography very soon. So please subscribe my channel and press the bell icon and keep watching the next topic about these mistakes. Number four mistake, this one is not using flash. For macro photography, flash is an essential part if you want to take good pictures. So when I started long time back, I had no flash. So I, I used to take pictures without flash and it was not good, definitely. So for beginners, I should say, if you have a camera, please buy one flash with it so that you can have a very good photographs at your early stage of photography. So let me show you how it comes without flash. I will switch off the flash and take the picture without flash. See what happens. I just switch off the flash and take some photographs which I don't see anything. I don't see anything at all in this ambient environment, in this ambient lighting without flash. Okay, what I used to do, I am raising the, I am lowering the aperture to get more light, say let me take at 4, aperture 4, I am decreasing the shutter speed 1 over 60 and also increasing the ISO to 400, okay let me see 500. Without flash, I need to take more light inside my camera. So what I, what I used to do when I had no flash, 
I used to take pictures in higher ISO with lower aperture. Now let me take some pictures without flash but adjusting the camera settings. Let me take some pictures. <clears throat> so I have taken several pictures without flash. I will show you the pictures which I have taken before with flash and other settings good and compared with this. So you will find the clear difference between the pictures taken without flash and with flash. Mistake number five, not using a diffuser. In last mistake, I've talked about this flash, you will have a flash. I'm taking off this diffuser. Now I have a flash camera setting. I'll go back to my previous setting, shutter speed of 1 over 160, aperture 8, and ISO 100. Now I set the camera in my previous setting. Let me take some pictures with the flash but without a diffuser. Let me show you. Let me on this flash. Flash strength is 1 over 16. Let me check. Take a few more. I have taken several pictures without any diffuser on the flash. Now I'll show you the difference you'll get when you use a diffuser for the flash. Let me put this my radiant diffuser. With the same setting I'll take several pictures with this radiant diffuser. When I added this radiant diffuser with the same setting, I'm definitely losing some light because of this radiant diffuser. Now, what I need to do, I, I should increase the flush strength a little bit in one stop so that I can get a very good picture. So I'm increasing the flush strength 1 over 8. One over eight. So I have taken several pictures with the flash and the radiant diffuser. So this is the number five mistake normally beginners could do by not using a radiant diffuser or any diffuser. You can use all other different kind of diffuser but you must have a diffuser in front of the flash. So there are so many types I will explain in another video about the different kinds of flash diffusers you can use for macro photography. In a week or so, I'll, I'll make a series of videos on the diffusers. In my previous videos, I have shown how to make this radiant diffuser of your own without any cost. So, if you are interested to make your own radiant diffuser like this, you can follow my earlier videos. There are plenty of videos on making process of radiant diffuser for macro photographers.
Now about the number one mistake. Sorry for keeping you waiting until the end. But to me, this is not any mistake about these techniques or about these gears or about the subject or background. This is a very special mistake could be done by the, some beginners. This is education and knowledge about the macro photography. All macro photographers, as a beginner, you should study a little bit about the camera gears, about the lighting, about the uh, setup, about the macro photography, about the depth of field, about the sharpness, shadows, whatever is required for macro photography. You should start with number one item, which is knowledge and education. There are several ways you can do it. You can read some books or there are several books in the internet you can download as a PDF. There are plenty of videos by very famous macro photographers in the YouTube channel. You should listen to them, you should watch their pictures, you should watch their videos, including mine, about the macro photography techniques and the macro photography process, about diffusers, lighting, flash. So you should start macro photography by studying first maybe a week or so you, sh you should watch plenty of videos on the famous macro photographers i'll give the link of the macro photographers to whom i still follow their videos regular basis i put their links in my description below please study first in my second episode of this series, I'll talk about five minor mistakes. In a couple of days or so, I'll be uploading another video on five minor mistakes in macro photography. So please subscribe my channel, press the bell icon, like it, share it. Thank you for watching until the end. Bye bye. See you next video.